Thank you, John, for the nice introduction. Uh, it's a privilege. Uh, it's a very uh, good uh, to have this opportunity to talk about our experience with uh, developing a high throughput approach to discover single domain uh, nanobody uh, and the rational design of bispecific uh, therapeutics. As you know, uh, we are in the immune therapy revolution for last almost 10 years uh, with uh, the checkpoint uh, antibody such as Catrita and Opdio is really revolutionized our cancer uh, fight. Uh, you can see this Catrita, literally uh, it's a PD-1 checkpoint antibody literally cured uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, late stage uh, melanoma. And he is now very active, uh, cancer free, and uh, very good uh, um, uh, transformative uh, cancer treatment. Okay. And not only that, there's another way of immunotherapy using uh, your own T cell to fight cancer, which is exemplified here. Uh, this drug, I think, is developed in UPenn initially, then licensed to Novartis. Uh, on the person on the left, Bob Van Hyde, was happened to be my former colleague at Dana Farber Cancer Institute. He later on moved to UPenn, worked with Carl Jones to develop this uh, breakthrough, revolutionized uh, T cell adaptive therapy. Literally saved this little girl called Emily. She is cancer free for more than five, maybe seven years already now. It's really, really uh, uh, revolutionized the cancer treatment. And this CAR-T therapy, the T-cell adaptive therapy, not only treat cancer, you can also, in this one here, exemplify, you can also for non-cancer treatment. We know when uh, people with uh, hemophilia uh, disease, when they treat with the protein enzyme replacements, they tend to develop factor eight uh, specific uh, antibody, they call inhibitor. Once they become uh, uh, resistant to uh, producing this uh, uh, neutralizing antibody against factor eight, then they lost efficacy. So, so the patient become bleeding and then no, no treatment. The physician has no, no way of treating. So it becomes a very serious uh, clinical problem. Now people were able to discuss this uh, reference here. Uh, the literature show that they can develop a CAR T like therapy, can wipe out this pathogenic uh, factor A specific antibody producing B cells, and they can solve this clinical problem. Uh, this is still in the development, not in the uh, FDA approved therapy, but it's very promising, uh, can solve severe uh, clinical problem. So all this uh, immune therapy, the key component is the antibody. No matter it's ADC, vaccine, a CAR T, or even just naked antibody, is a key component. You, how do you find a, a, a very specific, high affinity, good CMC antibody molecule is the key. So that's the reason we focus our effort to develop not only just traditional slow pacing hybridoma approach, we also want to develop a quick way, fast, high school approach to identify, to discover those novel antibody molecules. And here's an example just to show you that uh, traditional CAR T on the left hand, they use this construct called, it derived from traditional hybridoma, they convert into single chain FV. So this is very inefficient and sometimes they have uh, uh, expression level issue. But if now, uh, uh, of course, in the CAR-T uh, uh, areas, you can also uh, uh, optimize the intracellular domains, but such as CD3 Zeta, first generation. And the second generation, people realize that I need a co-stimulatory molecule like CD28 or 41BB in, in tandem with CD3 Zeta. It can, can you give you better uh, T cell uh, activation? And even third generation, they can put together in three, two stimulant, co stimulant molecules together. But outside this molecule, this single chain V is still the same. So this is need to be proved. 
And this is exemplified by Legend Bio. I think it's two years ago in ASCO meeting, they have a very uh, eye popping clinical results that what's the difference between this traditional versus this LCARB30AM, this is a BCMA targeting uh, antibodies. They use nanobot. They use two of those nanobody binding domain in tandem. So they tend to give you stronger ability to the target antigen. So that's the reason, the scientific reason give you better, very strong uh, uh, clinical efficacy. So this is now a license to J&J. It was like a 350 million deal was uh, uh, J&J is in doing the, I think it's in the phase two, phase two development. Okay, so indicating that, suggesting that the, the animal is the warhead for CAR T therapy. The warhead of the CAR T therapy the antibody component is critical. It's important. It can make a better CAR T therapy. Okay, but the CAR T has a, a, a its own limitation because of the nature of autologous CAR T. You have to the, the CMC is very challenging. Also, make the the therapy is very expensive. Okay, you have to take the T cell out of the patient, the culture modify, and then put them back. So it's a very long process, not easy to scale up, and it's individualized. So bite, in other in contrast, if you can make a, a off the shelf, can apply to many patients, a, a bi specific T cell engager. That means you can apply to many different patients. It's not have to be autologous, it's off shelf, but it does, it can go, this biomolecule go into the uh, in vivo, it can engage in internal T cell, redirecting them to tumor cell, okay? It, it does a similar uh, biological function as CAR T. So it's a good alternative to CAR T. It will be much easier to produce and it will be a lot cheaper. And this bispecific uh, uh, antibody will need good single domain antibody to build, will be very nice. So traditional antibody, which is uh, more than 35 years ago invented the uh, monohybridoma approach, it's a very long process, okay? I won't go through all the detail, but it's a very long process, very, very traditional, but it's very slow. And now, in the industry, they develop, diversify into many different uh, 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 other approach in, uh, on top of the traditional mouse hybridoma. Now people are able to use rabbit, use llama, and use all kind of uh, big animals because you can have more B cell to, to use single B cell. So this just uh, give you a, a, a overview of a different approach coming. See, like even people using, start using synthetic library, okay, provided by this, this bottom here is the other vendor who can provide the service. And uh, it's much more diversified approach. And what I like to share with you that all this different approach, it's, it's narrowed down into basically three different uh, platform, technology platform in terms of antibody discovery. One is traditional hybridoma listed here. And the uh, middle one is very f in fashion now is everybody using single B cell technology. If you have a good uh, large animal and you can also direct isolating human antibody from PBMC, from human donor, if that is infectious target, infectious disease target. And uh, another one uh, approach is people using synthetic naive library, synthetic or naive library. You can direct a panning from the library, but this tend to give you less uh, optimum CMC. You need multiple round optimization of the sequence. So here, I just give you an overview of how we do the single B cell approach. Uh, we start with a, a different animal, right? You ice uh, immunization with the antigen. Then you isolate the uh, B cell, total B cell, then you use antigen specific uh, Bs, affinity column or, or Bs to isolate those uh, memory B cell, antigen specific memory B cell to culture them on the feeder layer about two weeks, then you screen for uh, antigen specific binder. Then you can take those single B cell in, in uh, to uh, PCR and then do next gen sequencing to isolate those 
uh, antigen specific uh, B cell VHVL gene. Then you make a common one to validate. This is a uh, pretty much is a, a workflow for single B cell approach. And <clears throat> now, if you use start with the wild type animal, either mice or rabbit, you have to go through the humanization process. So, uh, a couple of company now able to generate this uh, transgenic animal, mice, mostly mice, transgenic mice, they can take the whole human Ig locus knocking into those mice. So when you immunize those transgenic mice, and you can produce a human sequence, right? So is that a bypass, allow you bypass the uh, humanization process. Okay, uh, the last approach is a phase display, as I mentioned. Uh, you can make uh, the naive uh, antibody repertoire either from healthy donor or from uh, uh, from a recovered patient, or you can from uh, uh, animal, naive animal, to, to collect those uh, entire antibody repertoire. And nowadays people, some uh, distribute, like a distribute bio or a twist bio, they have vendor provide synthetic uh, uh, libraries. Synthetic libraries tend to be single domain or, or like VHH-like uh, library also has very good uh, result coming up now. Uh, uh, which platform to choose? This just give you <laughs> an overview. Uh, it's about 30, 30% 30 people using each of these different approach. And uh, we tend to use uh, all of them, depending on the target. So we try, if the target is very important target to us, we will try all different approach to make sure we can get uh, a, a good binder out of it, get good diversity out of it. And uh, this is just your overview, FDA approved fully human antibody. Uh, majority, actually majority is from transgenic immunization because this is went through the human, uh, went through the in vivo uh, maturation tend to give you better CMC, less CMC issue. So it's easier to get onto the market. But um, in contrast, naive phase display panel, uh, such as CAD or DIAX, those morphosis synthetic library or naive library tend to give you um, uh, less uh, 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 optimum uh, CMC, that's why you get less <laughs> uh, final approval product. But I think the situation will be changed in the future and when we have better designed synthetic library uh, with more and more people trying synthetic, this can increase this percentage. Okay. And uh, for time uh, reason, I'll probably skip this uh, uh, overview of different transgenic uh, platform. Is there's more coming up, actually. There's uh, 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 Harbor Biomed. They have actually, we are, use, we are using their mice uh, coming up. So, but this is I call third generation transgenic mice uh, is to our interest because they are single domain. They produce this so-called so single domain or heavy chain only, mimicking the llama uh, VHH uh, Anybody because this single domain antibody, once we isolate it, will be much easier to engineer into uh, multi specific or bi specific uh, molecule. Okay, so so this is their mice. Uh, basically, they're knocking uh, these nine different uh, VH engineered human VH genes, they knock out, they delete CH1 domain so they can form a single domain antibody without light chain help. And uh, once you immunize this mice, you can get a, a single domain antibody. Of course, you will not uh, isolate FC, you only uh, clone the VH part. So you can have a, a building block from there. So we developed over the years, we optimize this approach uh, from mice immunization to uh, phage display. We do not use hybridoma approach because it's too slow. We take two approach. One is directly take the immune repertoire to build phase display library, then panning, find the VH sequence, and then validate recombinant and build into construct. 
Then another approach we use NGS. We don't even do monoclonal phage ELISA. We will just compare between different round panning and through the sequence analysis. I'll give you example uh, next. So this is approach overall. We basically digitize the whole entire immune repertoire. Then by uh, sequence analysis, basing, based on the sequence, we can see the whole immune repertoire. So we can pick many more diversified sequence to confirm their binding. The, here, just give you a quick example. The CDR3 is most important in single domain antibody. We can see very huge diversity in terms of for one antigen, same antigen, we can see many different CDR3 sequence. And um, then we pick those uh, clone, we validate binding here, as you can see the octet binding. It's very strong. Here, I just show you two of those binder at two different epitopes. When we put them together, single domain is already have double digit nanomolar, which is pretty good for single domain antibody. And then when we put in, engineer into bivalent with FC back, you can see huge ability bump, thousand fold increase. And um, this is just show you these two don't binder are at different epitopes, so we can put into to different format. And when we put in this mono specific bivalent, or we can put into bispecific tetravalent, right? So you can see uh, the data here, uh, the affinity can further increase by making into tetravalent bispecific antibody, okay? And the CMC is pretty good compared even to traditional antibody. Uh, we don't see significant aggregation. The production yield is also pretty good. Uh, this is not even optimized CHO process, stable CHO, okay? It, it, so it's comparable, at least comparable to traditional hybridoma uh, produced antibody sequence in terms of production, in terms of the aggregation CMC property. And here, just in, in short, using this optimized NGS combined with single domain transgenic animal, we can significantly shorten the antibody discover process. Basically, you can shorten from several years, at least two years, 24 months, so 24 to 30 months, uh, to like literally in less than six months, we can get. So you save years of time. <clears throat> and we can do this. Uh, in, in high throughput version, right? Since we, it's, it's a limitation is NGS. We have NGS machine, we can sequence uh, uh, 10 different target, uh, 20 different libraries, so we can quickly generate lead sequence very, very quickly, okay? So once we got those lead molecule, how do we do go about it? So we have to usually, most of the time, we will engineer them further. Uh, of course, we can use them as monoclonal you know, heavy chain only antibody, similar to traditional monoclonal antibody, as as a monotherapy already. But we tend to further increase their potency or increase their uh, MOA mechanism. We can, uh, you know, engineer them into multifunctional molecule. Okay, for just for better pharmacological property, you know, or simply just increase uh, affinity by putting tetravalent uh, format, okay? And uh, uh, we also can have better IP protection when they have more sophisticated molecular construct. And for better uh, uh, pharmaceutical CMC property, we tend to engineer them to get rid of potential unwanted post transition modification site, like an extra glycosylation site, uh, extra unpaired assessing, you know, uh, to reduce uh, potential aggregation or stability issue. Uh, so if we start with humanized mice, so the sequence come out already the human, so we don't even, we can skip the humanization. If it came from traditional hybridoma or from rabbit, from llama, those sequence we, we will need further uh, uh, humanization. Same time we'll optimize the sequence as well, okay? Here is just uh, the uh, antibody property 
when we characterize them, we're looking for affinity, of course. We need uh, them at the uh, nanomolar or sub-nanomolar affinity. And uh, of course, specificity only bind to the antigen we want them to bind. No off target to other unwanted target. But sometimes we do want them to have cross binding to uh, a, a signal antigen, same antigen in signal, so we can do talk study. Those are the important uh, character we were looking for. Signal antigen usually is easy because signal and human sequence usually is very close. Um, often times they are over 90% homologous, so easy to find. But mouse, if a mouse model study, not easy, but we can always do knocking mice, to knocking human antigen into mice to, to do uh, uh, animal model study. And the biophysical property, of course, I won't go to the, all the detail, but we, the key things is looking at thermal stability and the solubility. Those are the two key things when you develop as a develop candidate, development candidate because the solubility is higher, so you can make the, your drug concentration higher. It can smaller volume. Potentially, you could even do sub-Q injection because if you can put your antibody, uh, 100 milligram antibody in one mil concentration and they are stable, you potentially you can do a sub-Q injection. You don't even need to develop the IV because IV is tend to has a high risk and sub-Q is more easier and uh, more patient appliance uh, achievable. And uh, of course, expression level, right? Purification, they all these are uh, uh, stability at the storage. These are all the product quality uh, assessment and uh, characteristics that you're looking for. And of course, you need them to have uh, the biologic function that you have. This is a critical, right? You, you want them to have the biological function you want them to do, whatever target you have, okay? So these are the guidelines for PTM, potential PTM site management. Just if they have additional post transfer modification, you will need engineer them up. For example, if you have additional end uh, glycosylation site, in particular in the CD binding region, CDR region, you might want to uh, engineer them out. Uh, cysteine, if you have a cyst actual unpaired cysteine, unpaired cysteine, in, in anywhere in the molecule, it tend to cause CMC issue. It's critical to to get to remove those out, of course, without affecting their uh, binding activity. So all these are the key things to consider when you do engineering, when you build biospheric or multifunctional molecule. Okay, so thinking CMC early in the antibody lead selection is critical. You do not want run into a situation you have just push into a, already into the CMC development, you find this molecule is not optimal. It, 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 if you go back to square one, it's very costly. So it's on early at early discover stage, you screen more target. You, you, you evaluate more lean molecule at early stage. You can save a lot of development cost. Okay. That's what uh, our uh, development philosophy. And of course, in, in the overall process from your gene, of course, once you identify your antibody sequence, you, you have a gene. You, how do you develop them? Run through the stable cell line, scale up, GMP production, you know, the uh, CMC, the optimization process, drug product formulation, and all the way to packaging and distribute to able to run through the clinical trial to get to the patient use, it's an enormous uh, effort. It's a, it's a long process. But if you start with a good molecule, you can accelerate and reduce the risk of this process. So in summary, I would uh, hope I did not use all over the time. Uh, in summary that if you develop a therapeutic biologic, particular antibody, it starts with uh, unmet medical needs is critical, and then you, 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 you focus on the disease biology, pick the right target for that disease, it's also important. Then you use correct discover approach, you use good engineer approach, you can have optimized molecules and your success will become a natural thing. Thank you for your attention. 
Uh, I would be happy to take any question. So we do have one question for you, Zinin. Yes. And that is from Laura, CTO of Vectorgen. She's asking, how is that an intracellular domain can affect the affinity of an antibody domain? Does the antibody domain internalize? Antibody domain can be an internal, but most of the cases, the antibody is uh, it's, it's working outside the cell. But occasionally we see antibody can internalize, but majority case we only see the block uh, cell surface molecule or secrete molecule or neutralizing secrete or surface target. But we do some see some target uh, uh, like ADC. If you have an ADC MOA, you want your antibody internalized to carry your payload into the inside the cell. That is only uh, the occasion I can imagine is require antibody uh, need to be internalized. Wonderful, wonderful. So does anybody have any more questions for Zinin Zia? Um, his slide deck will be available upon request. Um, if you need his contact details, let us know. We can share his uh, email with you as well. Um, so thank you again, Zinin, and hopefully we'll look forward to your talk in the fall time as well. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.